What's up people? Good day, good morning, good evening. I hope you're blessed wherever you may be today. But you've just come out of church yesterday or today, depending where you are in the world. And you're not going to be just a hearer of the word, but you're also going to be a doer of the word. You're going to apply the word you heard from your pastor, prophet, elder, deacon, priest, whoever it may be. And apply it to your life going forward so you become so you become greater and bigger and bolder and everything you're meant to be in the body of christ because that's what we're all about in the body of christ we're about making people's lives better about bringing them into communion into relationship with christ and showing them all that they're meant to be here on earth so today daily verses are or should i say study verses oh one day i'll get that right uh, Zephaniah 3.17 and I'm going to start by reading from the NLT and then I'm going to read from the Amplified version like we always do because we like to compare scriptures and etc etc and then I'm going to read from the Tree of Life version also because I, the, the, the verse is quite short so I like to, when they're shorter verses I like to give three different versions so we can get a better comparison and be more closely more closely uh, looking at the word you know so it says for the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty saviour. He will take delight in you with gladness. With, with his love, he will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. And from the Amplified it reads, The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who saves. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will be quiet in his love making no mention of your past sins. He will redress over you with shouts of joy. And from the Tree of Life version, it reads, Adonai, or Adonai, your God is in your midst, a mighty saviour. He will delight over you with joy. He will quiet you with his love. He will dance for joy over you with singing. And Adonai is, the, Lord of, is uh, the name of the Lord, which the Jewish people like to use because uh, basically we, like in Christianity, we often refer to God as either Jehovah, uh, Jah, Yah, Yahweh, like these kind of names, Elohim. And uh, the, there's various names of the Lord depending on translation, Hebrew, Latin, etc. However, the Jewish people, they say that the name of the Lord is too holy that a man shouldn't speak his name. So they like to call him Adonai, like it means the Lord. And uh, I think that's a very beautiful way of respecting the Lord and I like to use that that name moving forward. And I've been reading a lot of like Jewish prayers and these kind of things and I find it very, very captivating. Because ultimately, you know, Judaism is, is the root of our faith and it's to be fully educated in what it means to be a Christian and to fully understand what Christianity is about. It requires some study of uh, the Jewish faith, of the Old Testament more closely, you know. And uh, once you start doing these things, it will start. You start blowing your mind when you start reading the meaning of Hebrew words and these kind of things. So then, it will start to really open your eyes to the message of the Bible, the interwoven story of uh, of, of the love affair between us and God. You know, it's, it's amazing. Like God loves us, and like we should love God back. You know, He loves us so much that He gave He gave us His only Son, Jesus Christ. And when you read the Word, it really it's, it's just a one long story narrative across many different books written by many authors at all points to one man jesus christ and it's very beautiful so it reads for the lord your god is living among you he is a mighty savior and from the amplifier it says a warrior who saves and in the in the tree of life version it says a mighty savior so what does that mean it means god is a warrior who's willing to come out and save you i just knocked my camera stand ignore that but he's a saviour that's willing to save you. He's, he's willing to come out and reach you wherever you may be, fending off the forces of evil, fending off negativity from your life. But God is a mighty saviour. He's standing by our side, ready to fight for us, ready to advocate for us, ready to be there so that we can excel in everything we do. That's what God is. He's a mighty warrior fighting our cause. That's what Jesus Christ is. He is the God of heaven's armies. The Son, he comes down, he comes down with us in the form of the Holy Spirit and he fills us inside, empowers us to go out fighting and stands with us in our battles. And that's very beautiful. When you think of God as a mighty saviour, as a warrior, it really indicates the sort of lengths that God, that God will go to in order to protect our lives, in order to lift us up, in order to guide us, 
and it opens your minds. Because what's a warrior? A warrior is disciplined, committed, never backs down, is willing to give their life for the cause. And that's exactly what God did. He gave his life on the cross all them years ago in the form of Jesus Christ. And it's beautiful and it's amazing. And every day the word of God captivates me and the things of God captivate me. And the more you become captivated by the things of God, the more the Holy Spirit starts to guide you, starts to fill you inside. That the love of Jesus Christ starts to transform your character, your life, and you start to see things in a new light. And suddenly the Holy Spirit starts directing you. And the more you understand about God, the more you start to see the, the Spirit's direction in your life. And the more it reaffirms your faith in our Creator. It's, it's incredible. So it says, For the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Saviour, a warrior who saves. Um, a mighty Saviour. He will take delight in you with gladness. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will delight over you with joy. So what's that saying? It says, he'll, he will take, he'll happily take delight in you, will happily come over, be, delight, be, be delighted with you, be ready to guide you, be ready to fight for you. And it doesn't matter how, the thing about God, it doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made, how many times you've fallen, he understands, he gets it. He's willing to forgive you if you go to him. You repent of your sins and you ask for forgiveness. He's there ready to accept you back, to bring you in. Like the prodigal son, a son who went away and squandered his, his, uh, his wealth of his inheritance early. Living amongst, you know, like crazy people. And then he came back home and his father welcomed him back with open arms. Even though he's lost his inheritance and all this money, the father had saved his whole life to obviously give, give his son. And uh, he, opened, he welcomed him back with open arms. And gave, and gave him like the prized food of the house, you know, and that's exactly what God is willing to do for us. It doesn't matter how far you fall away from the faith. Maybe you're filled with faith today, and then one day life takes you down a dark road, and you fall into sin, into perpetual negativity, end up addicted to something, and then one day you have the realisation you're going wrong, and you come to God, you ask for forgiveness. Regardless of all the horrible things you've done in that time period, God is willing to forgive you. Why? His love is unconditional. His love isn't like human love. It's not based on conditionality of like of of uh, of conditions of, of of what we need to achieve in order to be loved. No, God loves us unconditionally, and He will take you back and forgive you. Never think, never think you have fallen too far from God. God loves you deeply and eternally and wants you to walk with Him. And it doesn't matter how many times you fall, as long as you keep getting up again. Keep readjusting, keep asking for forgiveness, keep following God. He's willing to forgive you and he will delight over you and celebrate over you in heaven. The Saviour will leave the 99 sheep for the one lost in Jesus' name. Amen. So, with his love, he will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. So it says in the, the Tree of Life version, it will say, He will quiet you with his love. He will dance for joy over you with singing. And uh, it says here in, uh, in the brackets, in the Amplified, making no mention of your past sins. So God forgives your sins. He moves on. He mentions, he mentions them no more. He rejoices. He celebrates over you returning. And you can move forward in a new communion, in a fresh start, in a new relationship with God, free and forgiven from the burdens of your past. And that's something beautiful because in this world, people like to keep you down. People like to mention your past and not let you move past it. Even nowadays, I go back to my hometown. In, in, I'm living in London now. But when I go back to Ken, I mentioned this yesterday when I was preaching in, in Croydon Town Centre. I go back, people see the guy I used to be. The guy that was out there smoking weed, drinking every day doing all sorts of madness and stupidity. People see that guy, but they don't see who I am now. They don't see the mighty warrior of God, the apostle, the youth pastor. No, they see, they, they see Dino the drunk, the drug addict, the crazy guy on the street. They don't see, they don't see me now. And, that, and that's, that's sad, but God doesn't see me like that person I used to be. He sees not only who I am now, I mean, he sees the potential of who I can become if I walk in his, in his will, in his ways, in his presence. And that's beautiful. And we've got to hold on to that. Ignore what people say on the outside. Walk fully in relationship with Christ. Walk in, in our identity. What's our identity? We are children of the Most High Jehovah. We are children of Elohim. We are children of Adonai. We are disciples of Christ, of Yeshua. So what are we? We're children of God and disciples of Christ. And we've got to walk in these. We've got to walk in this. And when we walk fully... In these, in these realizations, in these truths, we, we become a royal priesthood, a royal priesthood of the Lord. And that's where we can fully start to comprehend who we're meant to be in Christ, 
with what our position is in the fivefold ministry. Are we a pastor? Are we an apostle? Are we a prophet? Are we an evangelist? Are we a teacher? Are we some combination of, of any of the five? But that's what all of us are meant for some kind of job, but we've got to fully walk in the path God has before us and we, then we can start to realise our place in ministry. And that's very important. If we want to walk, walk and achieve everything we want to achieve here on earth, we've got to serve God to the greatest and the fullest capabilities of who we're meant to be. So we've got to A, serve God with all our heart, mind, body and soul and love him above all things. B, love our fellow man as ourselves, putting them before ourselves, serving them before ourselves and C, then we can serve our own dreams and purposes and that's when God will bless our lives in that area. So today guys, remember who, the, who God is, he's a loving God, he's a warrior among us willing to fight for us and he will forgive our sins and rejoice over us returning if we just trust in him, he will guide us to a greater life. In Jesus name, Amen. Peace. Love you all.